Okay, let's get right to it here and welcome back Mr. Jim Mars from the great state of Texas. Let's talk a minute about uh, 9-11. It's coming up, isn't it? Yeah, it's coming up on the 10th anniversary. and I Patriot just, Day. I would just hope that people would get their sense about them and demand some truthful answers rather than wait for 45 years or so like we have on the Kennedy assassination where everybody no. kind of understands that something went on, although nobody's stepped forward with any authoritarian voice. I think, say, don't okay, you think, Jim, don't you think we have more data on what very likely happened on 9-11 compared to the same time frame with JFK. But I mean, even at the end of 45, let's say all things were equal. We we pretty well know what happened there. We know so much about 9-11 right now. We need to get something going on 9-11 while there's still an opportunity to prosecute somebody. Uh, already there's lots of uh, pertinent witnesses who are dying off, some under rather unusual circumstances. We started walking down the stairs. We made it to the eighth floor. Big explosion. Blew us back into the eighth floor. And I turned to Hesh. I said, this is it. We're dead. We're we're not going to make it out of here. Let me just point out that John Farmer, a former attorney general of New Jersey, who was the senior counsel to the official 9-11 commission, uh, has written a book. And in there, he bluntly states that the story and the conclusion of the 9-11 Commission are, quote, entirely and inexplicably untrue. So even the chief counsel of the 9-11 Commission says the story they told us is not true. Yep. So so what's the problem? Why, why <laughs> should people be stigmatized as unpatriotic mm-hmm. or fantasizing simply because they want See, to know well, that's, the truth? Well, that's the, okay. Still to this day, people think box cutters and Arabs did it. Lots of them. That's how thorough and that's how absolutely powerful the mainstream media is in this country. Where'd the story about the box cutters come from anyway? Came from one source. The call from Barbara Olson, the TV newscaster, to her husband, Ted Olson. Was that call ever validated as legit? No. In fact, in the Zacharias, Missouri trial, the FBI testified they only could find one call from Barbara Olson, and that call was unconnected. In other words, she never called anybody. There you go. Our understanding is that Barbara Olson was on the plane, uh, a frequent commentator on CNN and the wife of Solicitor General Ted Olson. Uh, She called her husband twice. Uh, during the hijacking to tell him the plane had been hijacked. And they lost contact once, and she called back. After the first call, uh, Olson called the command center at the Justice Department to inform them of this hijacking, and they said they knew nothing about it but would track it down. Olson, uh, Barbara Olson told Ted the following story, that uh, all the passengers were herded to the back of the plane, including the flight personnel, including the pilot. And uh, the only weapons she mentioned were knives and cardboard cutters. If there was no connected call right. to Barbara Olson, then yeah. where did that information come from? Right. Well, it came from her husband, Ted Olson, who, who said he received three calls from her. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, keep in mind, Ted Olson worked for the Bush administration. Sure did. So he might have had some. He might have been lying. Okay. Duh. But then, but then, yeah, there is an alternative, and this is really interesting. In 1998 or 99, the uh, out at uh, Sandia Laboratories, they had developed a digital voice morphing technology. They mm-hmm. displayed it to Colin Powell. Mm-hmm. And Colin Powell was aghast to hear himself on a recording say, gentlemen, we are here, gathered here to plot the overthrow of the United States government. And, of course, he never said such a thing, but it was his voice. And, and it was it, all they have to do is have a snippet of your voice, and they can construct a conversation or lines of narrative, and it's in your voice. So to give uh, an alternative to that, to the idea that Ted Olson was lying about getting the phone calls, he might have gotten phone calls, and he might have really thought it was his wife. But in either case, it didn't happen. And yet that's the basis of what we think we know 
about what happened on 9-11. 